Hi there guys and welcome to episode 30 of the tutorial sect. I'm Icon and it's a chilly morning at the tutorial sect with minus 44 degree. What a winter. Today we're going to cover artifact crafting because last episode my artifact crafting person finally made the breakthrough. We have now access to a nice amount of chi, at least nice enough to craft some items and also we are at the point where I wanted to explain the artifact creation mechanics in detail because now we're we're talking business. With this guy cultivating towards primordial spirit now, we are definitely going to get somewhere. But as it is with this game, we're always looking forward to the next step. That's one thing that's uh, that's just Jean Dao cultivation in a nutshell. You finish something, you think about the next thing because you're always running on the clock. In our case, we got a new window for fire cultivators in the coming spring. So fire cultivation is one of the things we need because we're going to reset Rougie. With the, what is it? Primordial alchemy law. This is the uh, second fire cultivation law and it's going to be core of our next uh, alchemy episode where we are finally able to really do alchemy in a larger scale but before we can't do that there's a lot of things to do there's still also a lot of winter remaining but just wanted to mention whenever you finish a project just just look at the next one because before you blink there's 20 days gone okay now our artifact dude he's now freshly hatched and we need new inspiration points for him half a million should suffice we're just going to send him over there because we're now going to send this guy away and talk about artifact creation in general so this always happens at the crafting table of course i can really say that the element of the table does not matter at all uh, i i looked it up because I, I assumed originally that it does make a difference what kind of artifact you create on which table, but no. This doesn't uh, get factored into the calculation. What's getting factored into the calculation are mostly stats of your artifact crafter and also the feng shui of the crafting table. So put them into a very auspicious room and your chances are going to be better. And last but not least, of course, the item itself does uh, play some role. But more of that once our friend Quan is at the point where he can actually do something. Ruji now is at the point where we're going to slowly get into the topic of subspirits. So I'm not going to uh, touch this topic today, but I just wanted to mention it that with the next episode, we're finally going to touch the subspirit topic, at least the basics. We're, my, my plan for the subspirits is I'm going to uh, explain first how it works and then we're going to play it through step by step because it's a pretty it's a pretty deep system. So we're going to send Ruji to pick up a million of inspiration because it's always for me a good idea to max them out before they get reset. Remember the first reset we did was uh, very hasty and, and not really orchestrated in any way. This time we're going to take our time and prepare her properly and while doing so we're going to get the most out of her uh, out of her past experience for the future because reincarnating is just a thing in this game and you need to plan around the several lives of your cultivators which is a really cool uh, motive because usually I haven't seen that in other games yet. This is one thing which really sticks out as a uniqueness about this game for me. So between the lines we're also going to build a sword shield now. I haven't talked about these yet. They are really good to do and just build them. There's nothing bad about them. A sword shield stores your artifacts and uses them in case of an attack. So whenever you be, you're going to be attacked in a uh, larger scale, you can use your artifacts to defend it with that thing. Uh, most of the time, I also use it as a as a dump for for mediocre artifacts, which I don't want to sell. 
Okay. So Ruji is back home, and, well, since Quan takes some time coming back home, there he got his inspiration, we're going to send Ruji now to study things which yield subspirits. Let's say he gains one subspirit. So, as you see here, there's a couple of skills which yield subspirit per se, and we're now going to try and learn as many as possible of those in preparation of our, of our reset. As you see here, there's a total of six skills I could learn if my inspiration would be high enough. I highly doubt that we got enough, but we're going to try. There's plenty of time, and my agency grew quite strong, so probably we're going to be lucky with that. Okay. So, she's done with her studies. Let's see. There's plenty of inspiration left. Wonderful. So, subspirits are like a uh, currency for your cultivators to... What did I do there? To transfer some of their knowledge from one life to another. That's the gist of it. One will come home any moment. Why can't I learn the other skills there anymore? Ah, they can't coexist with that skill I learned. I think I date I made a I made a mistake there. So that's why she didn't learn too many. I need to check that out in detail. <laughs> but that's okay. We're not doing this uh, to do it as pro as possible, or... Wait a sec, I did... I, I did get three, that's... Actually, I'm, the, I'm exactly the amount I wanted to have. Okay, confusions aside, Quan is back. We now are going to use uh, Bang Zhu's skills and first teach him a little bit, because... Oh man, it's so hard to discern them here. Almost clicked the wrong person. So I'm going to teach here first off Spiritual Breath Chand and maybe, no not the Rift of Calculation, it's Spectre Refinement because these are just things you want to have. So wait a sec, Base Mental State Bonus? Yes, these are very important so we're going to learn these as well. Because Mental state plays uh, does play a role in your artifact creation. So we're teaching a couple of things. Now we have some snow. Uh, and the merchant is paying us a visit, at least. Okay, so now he's still featuring a couple of hundred thousand skills. So the first thing we're going to do is where we're going to ch recharge his uh, his chi because before we can't do anything we need to we need to have power. So treasure items are worthless. What was treasures again? Ah this stuff. Not going to sell that anyways. But luckily we can now today sell a couple of these things but I won't or will I? Uh, well, let's do it this time. The thing is, once you have an artifact creator, all these items can be transformed into some higher value by by creating artifacts out of these. But we're going to do from scratch here. Let's keep the, the green ones, the tier 3 stuff. Oh, there's still plenty of those wonderful. So we're going to do this like that. Because the higher the tier of the item, the the, the higher the potential value of the, the artifact, of course. So these things are, as usual, intertwined. Okay, we got only a low amount of goods for sale, which is kind of tragic, but this will change. An Eternity Pill. I want that. Gimme, give gimme. Give I'll buy the Eternity Pill. Ochre Essence, well... Here's the thing, I think I'm too broke for that, okay. So whenever that happens, you flick out your Eureka Pills. I grinded out those while trying to get those advanced laws, you see. They're just... I mean, Eureka Pills are inspiration in a bottle, don't, uh, don't sell them away. 
easily, but these items are important for the, devel the development of my sect directly, so I'll, I don't mind selling them away. <coughs> Alright, these junk pills, they're not worth too much. Well, let's fill the rest with Spirit Stone. I just wish there would be a function to just uh, add the remaining stuff. But for some reason, that's not possible. <laughs> okay. Okay, we got this. So, Eternity Builds are something I, I really always want to get my hands on as soon as they pop up. So... We're now regenerating chi at an alarming rate. That's really cool. And now we're going to use the remaining inspiration we got to level up our, our artifact crafting. Artifact crafting is one stat you might want to max out at 220 for your artifact crafter per se. You can also achieve this by, or you can increase this stat by Letting these people, while they're outer disciples, craft a ton of things. This way they can increase their artifact crafting. I haven't figured out yet how to do this uh, as a guarantee, but basically if you already know who's going to be your artifact uh, law receiver, you just, uh, you're just you best off by putting this guy into the crafting job and let him work there forever. You can save a lot of inspiration this way. Okay, but let's craft the artifacts. When you get down to crafting artifacts, you get to select the item. The general rule here is every item needs a certain amount of chi and skill in regard to the tier of the item. So this means a tier 1 item need, need, needs relatively low amounts of chi and skill to turn it into an artifact, whereas a tier... Let's check out where do I have something fancy. Yeah, here. A tier 6 item needs a pretty large amount of chi and skill to turn it into an artifact. As you see here, the success rate is a meager 10%. And with these here, my success rate is 100%. So, I think that translates quite directly and simple. So, to increase your chances of succeeding, well, I already did one thing. You need a high artifact crafting skill, as high as possible. There's also skills here in this law, that's why we learned it, which increase the artifact success rate bonus on top of that. No other law can provide these stats. That's why I personally think every sect needs sooner or later a myriad artifact law cultivator. So the sooner you got this law, the sooner your artifact fighters will turn into real beasts. Because you can smack all the stats in the world on your cultivators and give them battle skills beyond measure. If they are still flinging a pile of poop at your enemies, that's not really a powerful artifact, but the pile of poop in this game has a special power. It's uh, disabling people, so you can add a random, you can add a debuff onto enemies by flicking poop at them. That's, that, that, that's an entirely different story. Teal the R of that, enchanting poop into artifacts is worth it. But we're going to craft something else now. So we're, we're going to start out with the simple things. I, I did that already a couple of episodes ago, I know, but we're going to repeat our lessons here a little bit because it's like, I don't know, 10, 20 episodes, can't remember anymore. So this time I'm going to pick up one of these uh, loot items my enemies have dropped because that's one thing I really love about artifact crafting in general. So he's going to sleep now, and now he's going to pick this thing up and create an artifact out of that. So the quality of the artifact depends on several stats. First off, the luck of a cultivator. Here it is again. Luck is the super stat of this game. Basically all your cultivators want maxed out luck, but it's impossible to get that. The next thing which influences the, the outcome or the quality of your artifact is the mental state of your cultivator. On top of that comes the feng shui of the um, of the artifact table, so the better this stat here, or this uh, auspiciousness is, the better. 
and I'm not entirely sure if the skill is measured into it. I I can't remember in the equations anymore if that showed anywhere up. But the most important things, basic material defines the tier, and on top of that, luck, mental state, and the auspiciousness of your table make up the random permutators if the artifact is going to be one tier higher than the ingredient or not. Because you can create artifacts which are, for example, a pair of pants here, tier 3. If if all the the, uh, the environmental effects are good enough, you're going to create a higher tiered artifact. And that's how you can create really, really uh, good items in the long run. So in this scenario, we didn't uh, manage to do this, but it doesn't matter too much here. Another thing which is worth mentioning, when you're creating artifacts, the stats on there are very, very well, obscure. I already mentioned that, but I want to repeat. Artifact power and chi capacity are like 90% of what's interesting for you. Here's a nice little thing. There's and a, a bonus on certain stats depending on the element of the item and metal and fire items get an artifact power bonus on on their creation so that means basically you are best off with cultivators that use the respective elements that's why i personally think earth cultivators are really good for for artifact fighters because metal items will receive an innate bonus to that so does fire just uh, wanted to mention the other elements also have uh, specific bonuses i also put a link in the description box down there where all the information about artifact crafting that i'm using here in this video is stored in a google doc big thanks for the person who put all that together it deserves some credit i'd say so that's that. With these skills, you can turn everything into an artifact. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Every item which is lying around, of course, we talked about the poop already, but also medicines and all manner of different items can be turned into artifacts, which is quite an interesting thing. But for me, it's also a nice way of upgrading the loot of your sect, because let's just do this. I hope that uh, that artifact already got transported away. No, it didn't yet. So, sec. Just waiting until that's in my stash. Find the merchant one more time. It's this. It's the easiest by showing it, showing the numbers. Okay. Now, when we go all the way down there. Manuals here. An artifact sells a tier three artifact sells for forty bucks. So, if you sell the pair of pants, it's only twenty bucks. So, it might be a micromanagement hassle, but you can upgrade your gear with or your your net worth of items by just randomly enchanting everything in your sect, which drops from dudes. <coughs> So basically your artifact crafter is a walking spirit stone upgrade for for most things that aren't worth too much. But the this becomes even more true when we pick up something like well, let's go for the poop. Dual quick crafty. I think uh oh yeah, well the trader is gone already. But here's the thing this is now also worth way more than the basic item basically you can even infuse worth into items which aren't worth anything for the trader like offcuts for example there's really a lot of power hidden in that but besides that now of course our crafter needs a ton of inspiration that's where it all starts and that's where we always end up with these things I personally felt like the artifact crafters are in insane sinks for for experience because unlike other cultivators, for example, my my favorite example would be the give me a sec, 
Juna is suffering from frostbites. Is she healing? Okay. Juna is important, you know. She's going to be my Shendal cultivator. Can't allow that something bad happens to her. So, um, yeah. The, the typical artifact fighter is, of course, a, a very good example. It He is, or she is, a insane sink for experience. Of course, you can. You, there's basically an open end. But the real fun thing about that is you can always reach the point where where you're like yeah that's okay I, i'm done with this for now this is good enough to fight off whatever comes now but with the artifact crafters where do you put, draw the line basically once you have tier 12 artifacts for everybody basically at least at least for me it works like that that i am greedy like hell for the next upgrade and the next upgrade and the next upgrade so there's really a lot of uh, potential to invest tons of inspiration there so juna by the way now receives some demon skin gear because whenever you really really want to protect somebody from the from from the elements demon hide gear is way to go so you see now her her tolerance is now to minus 54. Don't want to lose her accidentally to frostbite. These temperatures here are really nasty. I think I need to be careful. Oh, wait a sec. Dirt eating. Oh, 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 we're, we're starving. That's what's happening. That's what's happening, so... We need to send a... We need to send a good spirit. All right. Whenever that happens, I personally think that it's a good time to just go over there and uh, grab some food. You can also just uh, hunt some animals on the map, which provide food. Oh boy, I, I explained that much that I derped out on the food situation. Yeah, but basically that's 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 about it when it comes down to artifact crafting artifact crafting is not too uh, complicated there's on top of that of course legacy artifacts which are well i don't want to to feature them in this video too much because legacy artifacts are always linked to your law which you're applying and they're not like per se like artifact crafting you you need to fulfill certain requirements for these uh, for these artifacts legacy artifacts i mean and once you have fulfilled these uh, that's that you're done so you don't need to do anything anymore you don't need to uh, think about further stats or whatnot that's not happening there anymore that's why I didn't want to uh, focus that topic too much. Okay, guys, you don't need to eat dirt anymore. I got you covered. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit concerned here. Oh, we found Ratoon Village. What was that again? Place for fish and wheat. Wonderful. <coughs> so body cultivators eat up a lot of food, and the more you develop them, the more food they need. And therefore, it's important to have adventurous pendling pedaling back and forth for uh food creation sites or you you start out earlier than i did here with huge plantations i mean i'm not doing it professionally here to avoid situations like these you can also just put rooms around these and do temperature management with beast bloods inside there but i'd say we should be fine my personal go-to here right now is I'm sending Ching Ching, the person who's eating the most on a permanent adventure loop, this way. He's uh, he's earning his food, you know, instead of eating away or eating all the resources of the site. Okay. Well, let's dive deeper into Quan's skills and passerby. Let's check this out. Is this somebody we might want to keep? Nope. Alright. Group of bandits. So artifact crafters are really, really important for your sect out of a simple reason. They are the people which turn your uh, 
which turn your Jandal cultivators into real weapons of mass destruction. Because honestly, once your cultivators are beyond 10,000 or 100,000 artifact power, you will notice that difference. I mean, at this point, Bangju is already shredding these people apart quite well, with only 3,000 artifact power. But believe me when I say, once you're beyond 100,000 or something like that, you will see a different tempo in slicing people apart. And ironically, without powerful artifacts, all the skills you learn don't matter too much. Well, they do, of course, but for example, Bangju here. If I would replace this with a tier 9 or tier 10 weapon, 80 to 100 artifact power, we would see... I'm pretty sure she would be very close to the 10k already. If not exceeding. You have so many percentile bonuses on top of the... on top of these uh, rolls that it's, it's really insane how much you will... you will receive out of one point of artifact power more, basically. So... Go. Give those people wood. And here we're now funneling more and more experience into our friend. Of course, it is very, very desirable to increase these items here, uh, these skills here, whenever you can, because these are what make these skills are what's uh, making your 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 myriad artifact law crafter so special. Increases chi sentence by five lines, also pretty useful. And we're going to put the rest into artifact crafting now. There we go. We're now at level 17, and let's check out the item which we had before. So, you see, we had 10 person success rate before, and now we're at 70 person. So, let's try and create ourselves our own Dark Steel Sword artifact and see what we will create out of that. There's a 70 person chance of success, so there is a pretty fair chance of. Uh, not succeeding, but that's always part of the deal. Of course, he still has to develop a lot more. He's only a golden core right now, but I'll develop him between the next coming episodes. This episode I wanted to dedicate towards artifact crafting in, in particular. So my favorite is to develop these artifact crafters until they can create your for your sect artifacts of a tier 8 or higher and then then we're good to go look at this so this has transformed into a tier 7 item is what it was a tier 6 item before so that's that's what we did there this happens sometimes but this was by far one of the unluckiest rolls that i've seen so far it might be a dark steel sword, but it's really not too powerful. And also, to create good artifacts, I want to talk about item crafting in particular for a second here as well. Because when you create items, sometimes you don't receive a goldwood spear, but instead you receive a weapon like this, which even has a name. These are spe uh, special weapons which often end up with a tier higher than other items and they they make really good material for for artifacts basically the higher the material you work with the better so that's why high-end materials grow more and more interesting the longer you play the game because then you will end up with more interesting items so for example there's the lumina core bar which is something you will rarely use, but a Lumina Core weapon would have a high tier, which results in a really nice chance of a good artifact. I think you get, uh, I think you see where this all leads you to. So for artifact crafting, you will not only need a good artifact crafter, but also talented outer disciples creating good item uh, raw items for for your uh, processing them that's another thing you need to 
pay attention to because otherwise you will end up with no good raw materials for your artifact creation. Okay, so I don't think that I can add in anything, anything too special into this topic anymore. It is actually that simple. We, of course, need to study all these other techniques here and with these extra skills there, you will be ultimately capable of creating artifacts out of tier 12 base items. Because you see here, for example, this is, this is a good one. The second level will increase my success rate by 500%. The second level is not learnable by somebody else, so... It's pretty simple. Also, one thing that I didn't mention yet, but uh, I think it... Uh, it is quite easy to understand. A artifact crafter also wants to have as much chi as possible because the amount of chi is increasing with the tier of the items. Let's see, do I find something something really big here? Yeah, tier 9 item, 40,500. So it's really important that you don't end up with a to too low chi uh, stack or... or too low chi capacity, that's what I was looking for. But this is really only only something which will influence your 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 performance in the early game. Later, once you have high tier golden core breakers, you will not spend too many thoughts about the max chi capacity because they will have the necessary energy, period. Okay, so that's the episode about artifact crafting. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Feel free to drop me comments down below, ask questions, or add in information if you felt like I missed out something or maybe I did a mistake there. It was a pretty, uh, was a pretty deep read. And of course, leave a thumbs up on that video to make it more visible to everybody else. And last but not least, check out the channel. Daily videos happening there. Just subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and you won't miss anything from me in the future. See you guys next time. Goodbye.